This is the Sony Handycam model CCD F500E. It is a Video 8 camcorder released in 1989 and it is one of many Video 8 camcorders released during the late 80s and 90s. I bought this camcorder on eBay for £20, which included this lovely bag and inside it the camcorder and lots of batteries. Unfortunately this camcorder is really dirty and has some rust around screws and a microphone and also the microphone cover is also missing. The camcorder has also some internal issues which we plan on fixing. So let's talk about the camcorder's internal issues. Well it turns on fine, however when pressing the eject slider which allows us to insert or eject a Video 8 tape this does not work. So as you can hear, the motor spins up, but nothing else happens. In some cases, the tape door will partly open, but retracts itself back to its original position. And in many cases, pressing the eject slider button again does nothing. So let's see if we can get this old classic camcorder back up and running. So let's begin the repair and restoration process. Before we start the teardown, I want to check the tape drive to see if anything is broken or damaged inside. We start by removing the cover held by two screws. This will give us access inside the tape drive. Turning on the device and pressing the eject button shows that the drive is working but doesn't seem like enough power is going into the drive to complete the cycle. And inspecting inside, everything seems to be fine with no breaks or damage inside it. To further inspect what's causing this issue, let's begin the teardown. We start by removing the screws around the camcorder which have arrows pointed at them. and the two screws holding the hot shoe mount. With all the screws now removed, now it's time to unclip the plastics. I'll be using this plastic splugger, which will make the process easier. We start by prying off the plastic, which has the camera and battery light indicator. And then we pry off the next piece of plastic, which has the functions to power on the device or go into playback mode with the corresponding buttons for it. We then go underneath the camera, near towards the camera lens and pry the plastic, which gives us access to remove one side of the shell away from the body. We then remove the cables that are connected to the record button and the viewfinder on the shell and the ground cable and we put this part of the shell to one side and now focus on the rest of the shell on the other side of the camcorder, removing the three remaining screws. We then pry off the shell around the lens, which will then allow us to remove the remaining shell on the camcorder. And now it's time to disconnect and remove all the ribbon and wide cables plus any shields around the balls. We unclip the eject switchboard which should release the playback and power switchboard. This should allow us access to remove the final cable connected to both pieces of the camcorder. With the camcorder now in two pieces, we'll first focus our attention on the camera's sensor and lens part. 
We first focus our attention on this capacitor. As you can see, electrolytic fluid is heavily leaking from the capacitor and is now on the board. We need to go underneath the board to see if the corrosion has leaked on the other side and try and remove the capacitor. As we can see, a bit of corrosion is on the contacts, but nothing major. So let's try and remove the capacitor. With the capacitor now removed, we can really see the extent of the amount of leakage from this capacitor. I'm now going to use IPA to remove the corrosion from the board. Luckily, the corrosion doesn't appear to have caused any damage to the board. With the corrosion now treated, we now need to remove each board that is connected to the lens by removing the ribbon and wide cables, the screws and desolder any metal shields that are connected to the main board or are protecting another board. And after a few hours, all the boards are now removed. Let's now discuss about the sensor that is used on the CCD F500E and how it works. The Sony Handycam CCD F500E dates back to 1989. Variations of this camcorder were released worldwide. The F500 uses a sensor technology called CCD, hence the model number CCD F500E. CCD stands for Clark Couple Device, and these sensors were used in a variety of devices such as camcorders, fax machines, and scientific instruments. The CCD is the heart of the camcorder. A CCD has a slab of silicon. This slab has a row of insulated sections called channel stops, which the surface is covered with a thin layer of insulating dioxide. A thin strip of metal is placed which creates a grid for each pixel. When a CCD surface is exposed to light for a period of time, the CCD builds electrical charge in proportion to the light's intensity and converts the intensity of light into electrons. The CCD shifts the charges from row to row until it reaches the readout register and transfers the charge to the camera's memory. The camera then counts the charges and constructs the image using the data. A CCD sensor can only produce an image in black and white. However, Engine has constructed a color filter array on the CCD, which has red, blue, and green color pixels. The camera then calculates the correct color for each pixel, giving you the final result. We now focus our attention on removing the old capacitors and replace them with new high quality ones. And it's important that we do remove all the capacitors as we can see corrosion around almost all of the service mount capacitors on every board. So let's begin the recapping process, starting with the through hole caps and then moving on to the service mount ones. With the first board complete, we now go on to the next board. On this board we have service mount capacitors which require a bit more effort to remove. So as you can see, the capacitors are off now. Uh, each capacitor add either um, some electrolyte underneath the uh, capacitor showing that it was going to start leaking or was already leaking. So over here, as you can see, this one has already started leaking. This one uh, is basically leaked and it's gone, gone on all, all over the board already. Uh, these two are not too bad, but yeah, I mean, it hasn't damaged any of the pads, it hasn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the legs I am. Um, 
and then um, and then basically desolder all the old solder iron, clean the board around all or each where all the capacitors are. Um, it's not the perfect way I wanted to do it using snippers. Snippers is not the best solution of re removing these pa capacitors, um, but unfortunately, it was the only solution I could find when it comes to like something like these, uh, this capacity or these ones over here because they're so small. Um, and also, you've got other things around it. You don't want to damage components around it to that kind of so. It, it it worked, but it's not the best solution, and I wouldn't recommend it for anyone that basically uses it who's got a much more larger surface area and wants to remove capacitors. I always say either use hot air or use a solder iron. But for the for this kind of situation where you've only got a limited amount amount of space, uh, that was the only solution I could find. But yeah, but they're off now, so let's get these old legs off and clean the area around it. Using IPA and a plastic splugger, I start cleaning and scraping away the most affected areas on the board with corrosion. Once cleared, I then start removing the old capacitor legs which are still soldered onto the board, and then wick up the remaining solder on the pads. And finally clean the pads with IPA and a cotton bud. So let's get the new capacitors ready. First by putting some flux on the pads, positioning the capacitor correctly and then soldering each side. We do this with every capacitor on all the balls, one by one. It's a long process, but it's well worth it. And as you can see, the electrolytic fluid now making its way on the balls from the old capacitors. All of these will need to be cleaned up with IPA before the new capacitors are installed. We next move our tank into the camera's sensor board. And some capacitors just easily come off. As we look closer at the capacitor, the legs have been completely eaten away by the corrosion. And in some cases, the corrosion was so bad it had eaten away the pads on the board, leaving us to scrape away some of the solder mask so we can solder the new capacitor to the track. With the capacitors now replaced on the sensor board, we now give it a final clean before moving on to the final remaining board And with all the boards now recapped, now it's time to reassemble all the boards. So we have the lens. Next, we need to reinstall the sensor board. And give the other sensors a clean with IPA. We then reinstall the boards around the lens we then solder the shields and reconnect all the cables. And be careful not to break the wires.
So with the lens now fully reassembled, we're going to wrap this episode up. We've done a lot in this episode. We've replaced the old capacitors which needed to be replaced and replaced them with brand new ones and discussed about the CCD sensor. With part two, we're going to be recapping the main balls and we're going to be discussing how the Video 8 tape drive works too. So until then, thank you so much for watching and bye for now.